Hey, good morning everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a great day so far. So good. It's a good day if you're seeing me because God has purpose for you today. Just like he has purpose for me and I'm here today. And I'm here today with my beautiful Fred G. Sanford shirt. <laughs> and the G stands for going to heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, my shirt, my beautiful daughter gave me and my son-in-law. And I just, uh, just really love it, man, because I really like... Um, I shouldn't use the word love. It's a strong word. I like it a lot. And uh, it's one of my favorite TV shows. You got Ann Esther in there with the Bible. It's terrific. You know, they're always referencing God. Yeah, sometimes it's a joke, you know, but God's got a sense of humor too, you know. And um, even Fred G. Sanford, you know, God knew his heart as well. He had a good heart and he just proved nobody's perfect, but he had good character and good morals. You know what I mean? He just proved that you don't have to be perfect to be loved by God. Just like me, just like you. He's not asking for perfection. He's asking for our time. Our time. Spend some time with the Lord. The more time spent with Him, the better you feel. Because that's the reward for spending time with Father God. You spend time in the world. It's like hanging out with one of those negative friends that you just can't wait to get away from. Because it's always like, oh, it's going to rain. And the sun's out. <laughs> you know, or just everything's bad. You know, you could be eating the best T-bone steak or filet mignon. And it's complain about how it wasn't cooked right. Or this is that. You know, instead of just being grateful, man. Because they don't have God's grateful heart. And that's what, that's what happens when you receive Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. But we're going to get into this, guys. But um, I just... Uh, just love doing this. It's a it's a an honor and a privilege to be working for God and to bring you the word. And um, I just love everybody out there who wants to love and and loves the kingdom of heaven, loves Jesus, you know. And um, because if they don't love Jesus and God and the kingdom of heaven, guess what, guys? They're not gonna love you. Just keep that in mind when you make friends out there, new friends or date somebody, girls to the boys, boys to the girls. If they don't love God, man, they they're not gonna love you. They're not gonna be loyal to you. All right. Nobody's gonna be perfect, but. Just keep that in mind, okay, guys? Here we go. We're going to get into this Jesus Calling, and it uh, goes a little something like this. Hit it. All right. First off, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit in here. Holy Spirit, oh, we just ask your presence in here. There you go, guys. See them See them goose pimples? I didn't have those until I just said, come in, Holy Spirit. I invited the Holy Spirit in, guys, just like you invite people to a party. But um, here we go, guys. We're going to get into this. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. It says, come, come to, this is Jesus calling, guys. It's, come to me when you are weak and weary. This is Jesus talking to us. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you. Because weakness stirs up my compassion, my yearning to help you. Accept yourself in this weary, weariness, knowing that I, I, am understanding, I understand how difficult your journey has been. Do not compare yourself with others. That's one thing I did as a Christian, guys, when I first started this walk with Jesus and started following him. You know, I was walking behind him, you know. I'm comparing myself to this one playing the guitar, this one singing, um, this one doing poetry for the Lord. And I felt really, like, bad about myself. Like, what's wrong with me that I can't play guitar or I can't do this? But God gives us each a special gift. And, and what you got to do is, what's your special talent today? Sit down for a minute and think. What are you good at? What do, what, do you, what do people compliment you on a lot? People usually say I'm funny. Sometimes funny looking. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's, it's just a matter of finding what you're good at. And um, I find myself being good at. I seeked out myself and, and soul search, so to speak. What am I good at? Well, I was trying to be funny and being an encourager, you know, because I never want to see people feeling bad about themselves. You know, I did my whole life as a child picking on people, making fun of people. And... I flipped the script. I had that Saul to Paul moment. You know, Saul was killing Christians. He went to Paul. You know, he changed his life to God. Became a new man in Christ. And that's what I am today. So I took that energy, the same energy uh, I used to make fun of people, the same energy that I used to hit the football field or, 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 or playing basketball. I take that same intensity and I, and I walk out my door like I'm heading out to the playing field or onto the court. And I run with that, man, fast breaking. But instead of the basketball, I do still have the rock in my hand. It's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I, I just love uh, love this um, flipping that negative energy and serving the devil to serving God with it and bringing hope and joy and salvation to people. Hallelujah, man. So we're going to get back into this, guys. Don't mind me, guys. The, the spirit gets me jacked up, man. You know, people drink Red Bulls. 
Man, you don't know what flying high is until you invite the Holy Spirit in, man. You want to talk about a rush. Woo-wee! <laughs> Here we go. So don't compare yourself to others. They have a job. They have different talents for to serve God in a different way. And you have your talent to serve God in your way. Because Jesus is the head. We're the body. This pinky finger is important. My pinky toe, I won't pull my feet up. <laughs> I have to take my sock and slipper off. But every part of the body is important. If we miss a limb, you know, it's it's missing, you know, and we need every part of the body and every part of the body is important. So just remember, you're important no matter what part of this body of Christ that you're in that, that you are. It says who seem to uh, it says do not compare yourself to others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys are different from yours. It says I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with frigid frigid uh man Fragility, being frail, I guess, you know, being kind of like soft, providing opportunities for the spirit to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light, brilliant light. It says, um, rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weaknesses, allow me to bless you richly through it. And that's really beautiful. And that's the end of that. But, you know, the thing is, guys we're like children right you know when we were kids we needed our father you know and like we're adults now but in the spiritual world fighting against the principalities of darkness we're little kids man and we need our father man to get through this and uh just admit you're weak you know it's hard to say you know you know i'm i'm weak in this area and i'm I, you know and we try to do it on ourselves you know on our own so pride gets in the way guys you know we can have pride but when it gets in the way, it's troublesome, man. You know, we got to put our pride aside and realize we're weak. I can't figure this out. I can't do it. Call on God. Don't focus on how, how bad you, you know, how bad you feel about yourself not doing it. Just know where hope is found. If I see an emergency outside, oh, it's a fire. The car caught fire. Do, 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 911, right? Emergency, emergency. Spiritual world, same way. As soon as Satan attacks you guys, Call God, 911, fast as you would call a cop or, or a police officer, right, and um, and the fire department and emergency worker, whatever, right, ambulance, you call on God just as fast, okay? So we're going to go to one scripture I got here, it's Romans, Book of Romans, New King James Version is what I'm working out of, Nelson Study Bible, um, any Bible's a good Bible, there's some really bad translations out there. Um, so you still want to stay away from them. Just research it. You know, there's um, a lot of great Bibles, but there's a few I won't even give any attention to. But um, the New World Translation, uh, the Watchtower Society, run from that. Run, run, run. And run to a King James Version or New New International Version. Just uh, Google the top ten Bibles, you know, and you, you, you'll get your information there. But here we go. We're going to go in uh, Isaiah 8, um, 26 is we're going to go. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in weakness, for we do not know what we shall pray for, or for what we ought to pray for. It says, but the Spirit himself intercession intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So basically, when we tap into the Holy Spirit, guys, which I'll be doing a, um, a lesson on here in the next day or two, and I've been putting it off because God's been putting other things here, but leading from this will be a nice um, add-on to this. But when we call the Holy Spirit into our situation, like when I got down in front of this camera, I called the Holy Spirit in, so He can give me these words to speak to you. Because I really, you know, I'm just like you. I'm not very good with speaking about God's kingdom and His word and stuff. Yeah, we can read it. But the, the Holy Spirit inspires words and, and gives you wisdom that... that he wants you to hear out there. He knows who I'm speaking to. And it's just amazing how God works. But we call the Holy Spirit in. Once we invite Him in, now we got Him interceding for us, just like the Scripture said, amen to that. And now we have God's wisdom, His power, everything. Just like the apostles after Jesus passed on and rose again from the dead. Hallelujah! Woo! <laughs> That's fantastic. Just like He left, He sent the comfort of the Holy Spirit into the upper room where all the apostles were. And they received the Holy Spirit of God. And what did they do? They went out, preached the word, had great words of encouragement and love to share with everybody. They healed people. The guy said, you healed me, you healed me. He said, no, God healed me. through. He's in us. He, he who lives in us. He, you know, he healed you, not us. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. You, you've got God's power, guys. It's like tapping in, you know, like here it is again, right? 
this is us trying to figure out life today, right? No light, right? No, no power, no power source, nothing. So we're like, oh, dead, right? As soon as we call the Holy Spirit and come in this and lights it up, lights it up, man, with wisdom, encouragement, love, compassion, strength, and endurance, anything you need, you just ask the Holy Spirit to give you. God is lending you all his power through the Holy Spirit. So tap into it. Don't be sitting in the dark. Plug into the Holy Spirit. Boom. We got it, man. Booyah. It's like hitting a winning jump shot, man. It's like he's this is amazing, man. It's just when you bring him into the situation, now you have victory. Peace sign. Not just for peace, but it stands for V, for victory, baby. And uh, that's what you get, man, when you pull the Holy Spirit in. And let's see what the study note says, because I love the study notes. They really help me grow, guys, and they'll help you grow. So when you got a Bible at home and you're just getting into the Bible, you need a study Bible, um, most definitely, okay, so it can break down the Scripture for it. Now, it breaks it down so you understand. Not like the false teachers out there. They don't break it down to fit their agenda and make it sound all goody-goody. They break it down in a truthful way so you can understand so here we go what is it 20 let's see romans 8 26 what does the study note says it says though more it says though more may be involved in the concept of weakness it says the primary reference um, here is to mental ignorance the contrast um, offered by paul in the verse between our inability to know how to pray and the effective prayers of the holy spirit the emphasis indicates that the Holy Spirit himself prays for us. You know, when he sees us hurting and, and you know, he intercedes for us, like when we see a brother or sister down or even a non-believer who we love just the same, man. I mean, it's no different, you know. They, they just don't have nowhere to hand off their, their sin and that heavy burden. That's the only difference between us and non-believers. We're all imperfect. We're all sinners. So it says the emphasis indicates that the Holy Spirit prays for us. He intercedes on our behalf before the throne of God. But his intercessor, intercession cannot be uttered, which means it is unexpressed, unspoken, because it's the Spirit of God. It's an extension of God. So there's really no need to communicate from the Spirit to God between, you know, the Spirit to God, because the Spirit is of God. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are one. Don't let anybody tell you different. If your Bible says any different, that God, you know, Jesus wasn't God, God wasn't Jesus, and those three are one, you got the wrong, wrong, um, um, version of the Bible, bad translation. So that's the that's the thing, guys. Like we intercede for our brothers and sisters. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us with God. So even if you fall down and cry to your knees, like I do quite often, and uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm human, man. And I've been through a lot of stuff, man. You know, nothing compared to what Jesus went through. That's why I can make it through my day because I draw off of His strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I just tell you, I just. Um, can't emphasize that more call on the holy spirit invite him in invite him into your situations i don't care what you're doing and you're having trouble call him in before you pray call him in when you walk into walmart when you walk into a business office if you're going for a job interview the holy spirit will give you words to speak i'll get a scripture on that um in that other lesson i'm talking about but uh just for now guys i'll leave you with this and uh i tell you one thing if if the devil was around and our, or Fred G. Sanford was around, if the devil was around, he called him, you big dummy. <laughs> That's what the enemy is, a big dummy. You know why? Because he thought he was bigger than God, and his pride got in the way. Got him kicked out of heaven. Got him evicted from heaven. Paradise, man, you know, with the angels. And God, man, it's how, how crazy must Satan have been. He must have been a real big dummy. I got to be honest with you guys. Until I met God and, and knew what I was missing out on, and after I seen what God offers with his friendship, his love, the Holy Spirit to tap into the supernatural power that the world don't possess, I felt like a big dummy my whole life, man, you know, to be perfectly honest with you. Now I have God's wisdom, and I feel so intelligent, or not even intelligent, I have his wisdom, I feel just, yeah, intelligent, I feel smart, you know, and it's just like, but a humble, because I know it's not me, it's he who lives in me who makes me smart. And gives me his wisdom to make me project this wisdom to you guys, you know. People say, wow, man, that's great stuff, you know. Thank you very much. But I'm a tool in a toolbox. Um, when a carpenter builds a house up, you know, they don't walk over to the toolbox and say, oh, nice job, hammer. Nice job, saw. Nice job, drill. No, they go to the guy who built the house. So I'm, I'm humbly saying it's all God, not me. I'm just a tool in the toolbox, man, and I'm proud to be there. Rusty old pair of pliers, it still works. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just going to say, leave you with that, guys. Have a very blessed day, 
And uh, may the good Lord bless you today. And uh, I'm just going to leave us with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Father God, I just ask you to bless everyone who's watching this video right now, Father God. This is your inspired, Holy Spirit inspired video, Father God. With, with just all your love, all your wisdom to give hope and encouragement to those out there who know you but aren't intimate with you and the way to get intimate with you is to invite the Holy Spirit in spend time in your word encourage encouragement um, to I encourage everybody to and I ask you Father to encourage them to bless them to go to their Bibles today to read more about you and your son and all the miracles you've done because you don't change Father you're the same yesterday today and forever and what you've done in this Bible that I hold here in my treasure chest full of treasures nuggets of treasure you will do what you did for Moses David Elijah Daniel, you will do for us. We just have to have faith and believe. And I ask, Father, you and touch their hearts with the Holy Spirit and let them feel your power and your presence right now, Father God. Bless their families, their friends, their loved ones to be safe, happy, and healthy today. Bless our president, Father God, to keep fighting the good fight, Father, taking up for the weak and innocent. Father God, I know you're in charge, Father God, and your will shall be done. I ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Woo! All right, guys. Hey, have a beautiful day, and uh, it's going to be a great day, guys. Let's see what God's got planned. He's already got the day planned out for us, and the way you have victory today is to call on Him and bring the Holy Spirit into the situation. Call on Him. Call out the name of Jesus. It's power in the name of Jesus. Demons run from Jesus' name because they have to. See, Jesus took Satan's power on Calvary that day on the cross when Jesus was pinned up on that cross. He went down to Hades where Satan hangs out, right? It's like his bar, his hangout. And he took the keys. You know what the keys meant and represented? He took the keys to death from Satan. So Jesus defeated death that day and took Satan's power of death from him to have everlasting life for all who believe in Jesus. Jesus' death represents that. Call on Jesus. Admit you're a sinner. Ask him into your lives, guys. Okay? Don't walk around feeling like this. Because that's how I felt. I don't know about you. But just ask God into your life so you can see the goodness of God's grace and mercy and love through Jesus Christ and the beautiful Holy Spirit. And you'll see the world. You'll see good in you and everybody around you. You won't be picking out all the negative stuff because when you don't have God, you have Satan. Right? It's just a fact. And what Satan gets you to focus on is everything negative. Just like, you know... Uh, the people in political parties, I won't even mention them, no matter how good someone does, they don't give them credit, but they're always pointing out bad things that don't even really exist. They make them up because Satan is full of lies and, and fantasy. And everything they speak, you know, is all about that. And you can tell the difference, man. Why would you want to vote for people that are negative? Look at all the neighborhoods that are run down from these people. All negativity comes from Congress, you know, the Democrat Party, whatever you want to call them, I just don't even like giving them credit, but these negative people, their hatred for the president is so, uh, it's taken over that they forget about the people in their communities where they represent, and that's what Satan has tricked them into worrying about, getting even, getting revenge over, you know, somebody who just won an election, I mean, come on, man, you know, they don't have Jesus, so forgive them, okay, they don't know what they're doing, just like the people who hung Jesus on the cross, but God bless you. And remember, spread love, keep shining, keep smiling. God bless. Talk to you soon. Love you all. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye.